Hi, this is Adrian from Podium Physio. Today we're talking about the causes of and solutions for metatarsalgia. Hot foot or metatarsalgia is the name given to the burning pain that cyclists sometimes feel between the toes when they're riding. The symptoms of this syndrome vary between pain, burning, tingling and numbness and can be a combination of these. For some cyclists it's merely a nuisance, but for others it directly impacts on their training and performance on the bike and can even stop them from riding. Essentially, the small nerves between the toes, known as interdigital nerves, are being either physically compressed or chemically irritated by changes in blood flow or by an inflammatory reaction. In the early stages, this irritation is minor, transient and innocuous, but if left unresolved, can become much more serious. There is a risk of permanent nerve damage and discomfort if the problem is not addressed. In some cases, the nerve cells in the region can swell, become inflamed and thicken with scar tissue into a pathological lump known as a Morton's neuroma. If your condition reaches this stage, it is much harder to treat. There are numerous potential causes of hot foot or metatarsalgia, and we're going to break these down into broad headings and look at them individually. Foot shape and mobility. Excessively flat feet are generally less stiff and more mobile, and the midfoot and the forefoot bones can move around more in a shoe, push against the nerves and set off erroneous signals to the brain. On the other hand, very high arched feet are generally quite rigid, and if the transverse arch is high, then there naturally may be less space between the toes and less room for the interdigital nerves to move freely. Musculoskeletal imbalance or deficiency. Tight calf muscles and short Achilles tendons can lead to toe point while pedaling on the bike and shearing load against the pedal. The foot has a tendency to slide forwards in the shoe if the sole of the shoe is angled downwards during the power phase of the pedal stroke. Callus formation. Some cyclists have a buildup of thickened skin between their toes and around the balls of their feet. Um, which may be due to their off-bike footwear choices, uh, ill-fitting shoes and socks, uh, running style or previous foot trauma. Obviously, this build-up of thickened skin can increase and localise pressure, which is directed internally. Referred pain. Pain in the toes and in the feet may not be a local problem, but referred from other sources. Injury to the lower back, such as a disc herniation or a bony encroachment, can compress the nerve roots as they exit the lumbar spine and cause pain further downstream. Usually in these cases, the pain is more diffuse, uh, it covers more of the foot, not just a small area over the toes. Um, and there can be other symptoms as well, such as a loss of sensation and sometimes even loss of power. A double crush syndrome uh, refers to the case where there is a, uh, an injury or damage to the nervous system at one point along the nerve pathway. And if there's a injury at a second point along the nerve pathway, it would be more sensitive and more likely to complain. So if you have a hamstring problem involving the sciatic nerve or a calf or lower leg problem involving the tibial nerve, then this can predispose to problems further downstream and make a nerve compression between the toes more sensitive. If you have an unresolved or unrehabilitated problem, then this can leave a long lasting imbalance in the pedal stroke action and power. Typically the side doing the extra work has more load placed through the main contact point of the pedal. A leg length discrepancy where one leg is shorter than the other and this can lead to uneven forces at the pedals. So now let's have a look at bike fit, position and cycling technique issues. A common bike fit issue is to have your cleats positioned too far forwards on your shoes, which places direct loading right where the nerves are vulnerable in the forefoot. This also increases demand on the calf muscle and encourages ankling where the toes point down a long way at the bottom of the pedal stroke and point up a long way at the top. Saddle height. If your saddle is too high, 
then there are many compensations that the body can adopt to reach the pedal, one of which is extending the ankle to point the toes. In extreme cases, this can cause a shearing force along the ball of the feet, which can transmit stress to the sensitive nerves under the skin. It also means that the calf is constantly contracted to pull the toes downwards and is not acting as an effective muscle pump to clear blood and fluid from the foot back to the heart. Conversely, if your saddle is too low and or you drop your heels while pedaling, then this can overstretch the tibial nerve around the ankle and make the interdigital nerves more sensitive. Riding in an aero position. If you have a very aggressive aero position on your bike, then your nervous system is already pre-stretched across the hip and the back of the spine, and the same issue can result, albeit from the top end of the body. So let's have a look at cycling shoes and cleats. Unlike running shoes, cycling shoes are designed to be quite rigid to allow efficient delivery of power from the pedal action to the drivetrain. Attaching the cleats adds extra rigidity right in the area where the interdigital nerves are located. If your cycling shoes are too small or too narrow, or particularly if they're done up tightly across the forefoot, this is great for power delivery, but can compress the foot inwards from both sides uh, and potentially bunch up the transverse arch, which may lead to extra compression of the interdigital nerves. Different shoes have different shapes and come in different widths. So make sure that your shoe is the right size, the right shape and the right width for your foot. Make sure it is not done up too tightly. Cleat bolts. The bolts that go into your shoe to hold your cleat in place are standardized for each brand of cleat. However, if you are not using the standard bolt that comes with the cleat, particularly if you have a leg length discrepancy and are using shims, or if you're trying to correct angulations in your feet and you're using wedges, typically you'll have a different bolt to the one that came with your cleat. It's really important to make sure that the bolts are the right length and are not protruding through the sole of the shoe and rubbing directly against your foot. Cycling shoe footbeds. Cycling shoes are manufactured at and marketed at a particular price point. And to keep costs down, the majority of cycling shoes have an inner sole, which is generally fairly thin, fairly flimsy, and pr provides next to no cushioning or support. Most cyclists would never take the inner sole out of their cycling shoe to inspect it, so would never know just how thin they really are. Unlike running, where the force of landing of each step and the subsequent propulsion phase utilises the entire foot, i.e. the load is spread, in cycling the foot stays pretty still inside a rigid shoe and most of the loading and force production is through the forefoot and the ball of the foot region. The load is concentrated over a very small area. Environmental considerations. In cold weather, the extremities are already at risk of circulatory deficiency so any numbness is likely to be exaggerated in cold weather. So let's now turn our attention to how we can help the problem of hot foot or metatarsalgia. Improving circulation. When cycling, your feet are in a rigid shoe with very little movement within that shoe. To help this situation, take the opportunity for more stoppages where you can uncleat, move your feet around away from the pedal and while riding, find opportunities to wiggle your toes, curl them, release them. This will encourage circulation and help to remove metabolic waste products. Load on the pedal. Try changing the area where you load the pedal. Trial temporarily changing the pressure through your foot from the inside big toe area to the outside little toe area while riding. The big toe is the best equipped part of the foot for propulsion on the bike but sometimes a short-term change in pressure will help. Also, try to regularly change your hand position around the handlebars from the tops to the hoods to the drops to alter your overall body position and give your feet a slight change in pressure and activation. Get out of the saddle more often to alter the pressure points in your feet. 
This may seem counterintuitive as now there is no pressure on your saddle and it is all delivered through the pedal, but the changes to your back position, leg extension, nervous system stretch and foot position can all be advantageous. Exercises off the bike. Nerve mobilization exercises such as sciatic nerve flossing can assist with freeing up tethered or stuck nerves. Strengthening the intrinsic foot muscles can help support the foot arches and also add bulk and direct padding under the transverse arch of the foot. This is like creating your own internal cushion and shock absorber. These exercises are a little unusual. Things like clenching your toes to pick up marbles and foot shortening, but you'll soon get the hang of them. Bike fit and equipment solutions. We know that a poor position on your bike can contribute to stress on the nerves and soft tissues around your toes. While it may be tempting to make some simple changes to your bike yourself, it's important to understand that this may have a ripple effect on the kinetic chain uh, and therefore, therefore have unwanted and undesirable consequences elsewhere. An experienced bike fitter can make appropriate changes to your bike and cleats. Adjustments that may be required to your bike include saddle height, fore and aft position and angle, handlebar height and angle, crank length, and adjustments that may be required to your bike shoes include cleat position and angle and the application of varus and valgus wedges. Regardless of whether you have flat feet or a high arch, a good quality and supportive inner sole will make a big difference. Here are some that I have used in my clinic. The G8 inner sole is a great cycling specific product and one that I have used in my cycling shoes for several years. They provide a great level of adjustment as the arch support can be shifted and held in place in a multitude of different positions and each pair of inner soles comes with five different arch support sizes to choose from. The Cobra inner sole is a single piece and therefore not adjustable in the same way, but it can be altered by the addition of smaller components to change its shape. Metatarsal domes. What is this little creature? This piece of foam probably does more to help hot foot than most other interventions. It is essentially a mini support, usually stuck to the inner sole, not where the nerve pain is felt, but further towards the heel in the midfoot region. It creates a more central point in the foot for load to be distributed to, to allow the sensitive nerves further down towards the toe to benefit from pressure relief. Essentially, it lifts the toe bone slightly so there is less contact pressure in and around the interdigital nerves. These can usually be purchased with your new aftermarket inner soles, or you can get them separately from places like Amazon. They are surprisingly simple and easy to find. Keep your feet warm. Using shoe covers or even just neoprene toe covers can go a long way to retaining peripheral warmth and improve circulation in the toes. What about physiotherapy treatment? As a physio, I would typically treat metatarsalgia with mobilization to the joints around the forefoot, frictions and massage in and around the toe areas, massage and nerve mobilization to the calf and hamstring and joint mobilization to the lower back. Other modalities such as ultrasound may help to speed up the healing of the local nerve irritation. Other medical care. If conservative physio is not adequate, sometimes more aggressive medical care may be required. Usually the first port of call is to try a cortisone injection between the toes to the irritated and inflamed nerve tissue. Other options may include procedures to temporarily or permanently block nerve signals coming from the area. And surgery is normally a last resort. If your hot foot problem is particularly stubborn, work with your health professional to come up with a symptom modification plan. This may require shorter rides, 
using different gearing on your bike, having longer rests between rides. But usually there is a way to keep your symptoms under control, even if they cannot be eliminated completely.